If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Nikola Tesla According to the Bible, the universe was created by the Word of God, created by sound. Welcome back. I'm Lex Levy, and this is Ancient Odysseys. Today I will discuss my hypothesis that I submitted in 2019 for the NASA Mars Atmospheric CO2 Conversion Challenge. I believe my theory is relevant in the Egyptian pyramids producing chemicals on an industrial scale as theorized by my husband Jeffrey Drum at the Lambda Chem. The link to his YouTube channel and website is in the video description below. Also, if you'd like to help support our expeditions and research, pick up some Ancient Odysseys merch. Thank you all very much. Now, let's go. The NASA CO2 Conversion Challenge is a $1 million competition to convert carbon dioxide into sugars, such as glucose, as a step to creating mission-critical resources. Such technologies will allow NASA to manufacture products using local indigenous resources on Mars and Earth by using waste and atmospheric carbon dioxide as a resource. My theory, an entirely novel concept, is based on an observable phenomenon, structural self-assembly by frequency, as seen in cymatics. Here is a brilliant video from ABC Science visualizing sound through cymatics and resonant frequencies. I will now go over my original proposal for my technology. For the technical abstract, I wrote a brief description of the physical chemical, no biological components allowed, process or system that uses CO2 as the sole carbon source to produce selected carbon-based molecular compounds that I propose to construct. Here is my abstract. This art supports in situ resource utilization, in space manufacturing, employing Martian atmospheric gases such as CO2 or nitrogen and surface water to produce carbon based molecular compounds of particular interest, D glucose, through physical chemical self assembly via application of the desired derived compounds resonant frequency to carbonated, alternatively nitrogenated, H2O. For the technology overview, I describe the physical chemical system that I plan to develop, the CO2 conversion process the system uses, and its chemistry, including any consumable chemicals, catalysts, etc. I listed the targeted compounds and their characteristics. Here are the molecules that my physical chemical system would produce. My challenge compounds were D-glucose, hexoses, pentoses, tetroses, trioses, and glycerol. Here's my equipment and chemicals list. These are the assumptions made about the development of my proposed technology. 
I explained my understanding of the necessary operations or tactics critical to overcoming implementation challenges. The proposed technology assumes that frequency can be measured for solutions of known concentrations. That frequency application can organize at the molecular level. That frequency application can produce repeatable results. The necessary operations and tactics are efficacy, reproducibility, scalability, yield, size of system, mass of system, modularity, efficiency, resource utilization, and stability. Here I describe the physical characteristics of my system, including the major hardware components, process information, and component level detail as deemed relevant to the system solution. The estimated size of the system is that of a workbench for preliminary testing. Once the resonant frequency is defined for a target product and its specific concentration, the estimated energy of the system needed for conversion is that required for a frequency generator. The anticipated carbon dioxide to product conversion efficacy rate is hypothesized to be dependent on carbon dioxide or nitrogen dissolution rate as a limiting factor. The targeted production rate is estimated to be instantaneous and continuous as long as substrate, dissolved gas and H2O, is continuously fed into the system. If you want to help support our expeditions and research, pick up some new Badass Ancient Odysseys merch. The link is in the video description below. Fitted tees, stickers, shorts, and explorer packs are now available. Thank you all very much. For the project milestones, I delineated a viable path to success and supported it by rationale obtained from research. This is where I described the milestones and timeline needed to build my prototype. In the first one to two months, I would set parameters by determining target carbon-based sugar compound solutions resonant frequency using a piezoelectric sensor and oscilloscope, removing background frequency from the captured spectra. The next one to two months would be dedicated to production and analysis. I would apply the determined frequency to carbonated H2O using a frequency generator. I would then semi-quantitatively test for the target sugar compound using a Benedict solution or a blood sugar testing device. In the remaining three to nine months, I would quantitatively test for the target sugar compound using NMR optimization and focus on the final design. Finally, if presence of a target compound is detected, the method shall be optimized for yield and system mass reduction. This is my preliminary design schematic that represents the physical chemical system I envision constructing in order to demonstrate the production of selected carbon-based molecular compounds. The system was to be scaled such that, at minimum, it generates sufficient product within a continuous seven-hour period and to allow analytical characterization and verification using conventional analytical methods. This is the gas inlet for dissolution. Our example here is carbon dioxide. And the frequency generator, a catalyst for molecular self-assembly. This is a reaction vessel made of quartz and filled with solvent, in this case H2O. This is the piezoelectric transducer sensor or microphone which converts resonance or frequency to an electrical signal for solution frequency definition. Our product in this case, the self-assembled molecule, is D-glucose, synthesized without the need of UV or chlorophyll. Now, I will explain how my idea is relevant in the function of the Egyptian pyramids producing chemicals on an industrial scale. 
During our many expeditions inside the Egyptian pyramids, we observed incredible acoustic properties of specific chambers made of specific geology in which sound or ultrasound is amplified and in which the chamber resonates at certain frequencies. Let's begin at the Red Pyramid in which my husband theorizes that it was being utilized to produce ammonia on an industrial scale. This is ammonia, NH3. It consists of one nitrogen and three hydrogen atoms. And the god Amun, in which our modern day word for ammonia is thought to be derived. I believe that the chambers are tuned to the specific frequency of the intended product and is a catalyst in the chemical reaction which facilitates the formation of product molecules. I've observed the chambers myself and can attest to the acoustic properties and the intense smell of ammonia. Now, let's explore the Great Pyramid in which Jeffrey theorizes its function was to produce dilute sulfuric acid on an industrial scale. The acoustic amplification within the King's Chamber is noticeable, but it is most intense within the red granite antechamber. The antechamber may have a resonant frequency of sulfur trioxide to facilitate the conversion of sulfur dioxide and oxygen for the dissolution in H2O within the Grand Gallery. Here are photos from our private access into the Great Pyramid where we are experimenting with the acoustic properties within the antechamber. Here is an awesome photo of Jeffrey within the Grand Gallery where the sulfur trioxide would have dissoluted. Be sure to watch the Land of Chems episode 100 and 120 to learn more about the synthesis of dilute sulfuric acid within the Great Pyramid. Now, let's explore the Pyramid of Wanis in Saqqara. Within the Pyramid of Wanis, there is also a red granite porcola system here at number three. And limestone acoustic amplification chambers, conventionally called magazines, here at number five. They are devoid of any inscription. We LIDAR scanned the limestone acoustic amplification chambers with the hopes of working with an acoustic engineer to determine the exact frequency these chambers are tuned to resonate at. And now, enjoy a video of our LIDAR scan of the limestone acoustic amplification chambers. This concludes today's episode. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, pick up some merch, and stay tuned for more epic adventures from ancient odysseys. Never stop exploring. If you want to help support our expeditions and research, pick up some new badass ancient odysseys merch. The link is in the video description below. Fitted tees, stickers, shorts, and explorer packs are now available. Also, please subscribe to our two new channels here on YouTube, Egyptian Trash Cats, where we document our saga in caring for the street cats of Egypt, and Egypt Eats for all of our crazy culinary adventures. Thank you all very much.